three minutes? You can start, yes. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. This presentation is about um, the shape of things to come. I start with a disclaimer. You can read it in a nutshell. There will be no Life of Brian jokes today. You will get them next year. You will get them next year in prison. And now to something completely different. Thank you. URLs are not suitable for scientific reference. You all know this. URLs expire when the content they are referring to is moved or deleted from the internet. It's a broken link. It's a 404 error. Um, this is a growing problem, especially for OSGEO, because over these over 20 years that we're doing this, uh, when you check, when you go to the old emails, many of these links are broken. You can't find the stuff. Yet you can go to the Internet Archive and try to find echoes of the mementos. But this is really ugly, not nice. And seriously, anything referenced in a scientific publication should be permanent. And the URL, by design, are not permanent. <gasps> Back to Brian, no. OK, so there's an alternative, which is based on URL. It's a so-called persistent identifier. Quick check, who has heard the term? OK, that's fine. Um, just the red thing is important. It's not just persistent, this thingy, but it's also actionable. It's a lot of a string which you can throw in any web browser. It, it, will, it is guaranteed to resolve to the kind of content behind it. Can be text, can be video, can be whatever. And these persistent identifiers, PID, they come in different flavors. Um, and they're also established standards. There are ORCIDs, which are for people. Think of dog tags for us, for me, for you. Uh, there are digital object identifiers, DOI. You can use them for code, data, and video, and also for publications. Most of them have already seen them in scientific publications. And the new, th the new kit on the block are ROR, ROR. My family name is Line in Germany, so I like that ROR sound, of course. These are research organization registries. That might be a thing for OSU in the long run. We have to discuss this. The take-home message is these are established infrastructures. Some guys are running that, and they these things can be interlinked. Nope. Okay. OSGEO is already exploring this. Uh, OSGEO code committers, like the Grass Project, they already include their ORCID IDs in code. 19 OSGEO projects have registered digital object identifiers. You see the logos here, some of them might be familiar, um, for their repositories. So we can scientifically cite the whole repo, but also individual release. You can do that in your work. Uh, so you can give due scientific credit to the committers. That's the guy with the orchids. So it really works. It gives benefit. And the other thing is we have over 39 days. This is for those of you who like to binge watch things, Game of Thrones, whatever. This is for you. We have 930 whopping hours of uh, video recordings from all the old days from 20 years back. And also from today, we'll have that. So you can also access that and you can scientifically cite it in your work if you like that. Um, the first time that this is actually was put in place is the new wonderful publication, Springer Handbook of Geographic Information. You don't have to go for the QR code, just see me later on if you want. The open, open source GS cap, uh, uh, chapter is available for free download. I can set you up with the coordinates if you like. Um, so on the other hand, we are always geo. We know our stuff, right? Don't we? Uh, and so there are eternal URLs and digital doc tags. Who cares, really? Well, we will care. Because the backend infrastructures which make that possible, they are growing and they are players like Datasite, Crossref, I guess you didn't ha haven't heard about that, of them, but also it's becoming standards like DIN, it's just like ISO for in Europe. And um, another thing is remember the internet. In the 80s we had home computers and they were not connected. Well, great. Okay, connecting these isolated computing resources to the internet was a process, took time, learning curve, but it gave us unforeseen benefits and services. That's why we're here. And uh, these emerging PID infrastructures, dark tags, eternal URLs, blah, blah, enable new connectivity and discoverability, which we haven't seen yet, for metadata and content. Um, and your input is needed to shape this, this brave new world which is coming. Just as an example from the community, it's very hard to figure out what OSG is actually, what, what are we? Uh, Stefano Costa tried to plot it out. Yellow, what you see up there, is people. The other bubbles are software. Yeah. Okay. Quadrina did it online, interactive, 
And we really hope with these mechanisms, the, the buzzword for that is linked open data and interoperable, as in the FAIR principles, I, interoperability, will give us something like the matrix and we can fly around like, um, what's the name, Neo. Okay, thank you for your attention. And just for the last second, robots. <laughs> okay, thank you.